You might not know that we have an Instagram account, but we post exclusive content over there, as well as links to the articles that we post on our website. We also recently reached 10,000 followers, so to celebrate we have some extra special content planned. Be sure to head over there and give us a follow so that you don't miss a thing. So as you might have seen, yesterday John Burko, the Speaker of the House of Commons, made a surprise announcement. Citing Erskine May, a 19th century political document on parliamentary procedure, he argued that it would not be proper for Parliament to vote on May's deal for a third time unless it was substantially different from the deal on offer last week. Order. I wish to make a statement to the House. There has been much speculation over the past week about the possibility of the government bringing before the House a motion on Brexit for another so-called meaningful vote. On the 13th of March, however, the Right Honourable Lady, the member for Wallasey, asked on a point of order whether it would be proper for the government to keep bringing the same deal back to the House ad infinitum. I replied that no ruling was necessary at that stage. I don't need to treat of them now, and no ruling is required now. There may be people who have an opinion about it. I'm not really preoccupied with that, but a ruling would be made about that matter at the appropriate time, and I'm grateful to the Right Honourable Lady for reminding me that such a ruling might at some point in the future be required. So, true state. Subsequently, members on both sides of the House and indeed on both sides of the Brexit argument, have expressed their concerns to me about the House being repeatedly asked to pronounce on the same fundamental proposition. The 24th edition of Erskine May states on page 397 that, and I quote, a motion or an amendment which is the same in substance as a question which has been decided during a session may not be brought forward again during that same session. It goes on to state that, and I quote, attempts have been made to evade this rule by raising again with verbal alterations the essential portions of motions which have been negatived. Whether the second motion is substantially the same as the first is finally a matter for the judgment of the chair. This convention is very strong and of long standing, dating back to the 2nd of April, 1604. Yeah. One of the reasons why the rule has lasted so long is that it is a necessary rule to ensure the sensible use of the House's time and the proper respect for the decisions which it takes. So far as our present situation is concerned, let me summarise the chronology of events. The draft EU withdrawal agreement giving effect to the deal between the government and the EU was published on the 14th of November. The first scheduled vote was due to take place on the 11th of December. However, on the 10th of December, the vote was postponed after 164 speeches had already been made over three of the five days allotted for the debate. That postponement was not caused by me, nor by the House, but by the Government. Indeed, I pointed out at the time that this was deeply discourteous to the House. Over five weeks later, the first meaningful vote was held on the 15th of January which the government lost by a margin of 230 votes, the largest in parliamentary history. <laughs> Subsequently, the second meaningful vote was expected to take place in February, but once again there was a postponement. It finally happened only last Tuesday, 
the 12th of March. The government's motion on the deal was again very heavily defeated. In my judgment, that second meaningful vote motion did not fall foul of the Convention about matters already having been decided during the same session. This was because it could credibly be argued that it was a different proposition from that already rejected by the House. In procedural terms, it was therefore quite proper that the debate and the second vote took place last week. It has been strongly rumoured, though I have not received confirmation of this, that third and even possibly fourth meaningful vote motions will be attempted. Hence this statement, which is designed to signal what would be orderly and what would not. This is my conclusion. If the government wishes to bring forward a new proposition that is neither the same nor substantially the same as that disposed of by the House on the 12th of March, this would be entirely in order. What the government cannot legitimately do is to resubmit to the House the same proposition or substantially the same proposition as that of last week, which was rejected by 149 votes. This ruling should not be regarded as my last word on the subject. It is simply meant to indicate the test which the government must meet in order for me to rule that a third meaningful vote can legitimately be held in this parliamentary session. This was a surprise to everyone, especially the government, who gave a slightly grumpy statement to the press about not being given any forewarning. Burko gave three reasons for his decision. Firstly, he claimed that he was concerned with judicious use of parliamentary time, when that time is finite. It is a necessary rule to ensure the sensible use of the House's time and the proper respect for the decisions which it takes. Secondly, he thought it was useful to ensure clarity and consistency so far as the statute book is concerned. And finally, he argued that another vote would undermine the concept of respect for the importance of decisions made by the House and the weights to be attached to them. Decisions of the House matter. They have weight. In many cases, they have direct effects, not only here, but on the lives of our constituents. He also explained that he let the second vote go ahead because it was substantially different to the first one, because of the statutory instrument that was added at the very last second. So this has obviously upset the government, but what did everyone else think? Well, quite a few Brexiteers congratulated Burko afterwards, thinking that this decision makes May's deal less likely, and therefore no deal more likely. Some Brexiteers argued this meant that there couldn't be another vote on a second referendum, as there had already been a vote on the second referendum last week, but Burko said that it depended on circumstance. While this announcement hasn't exactly helped the government, it doesn't completely preclude the possibility of a third meaningful vote. Although Burko said that a substantial change would require some sort of renegotiation at an EU level, and not just a clarification of Geoffrey Cox's legal advice, this isn't completely impossible. While the withdrawal agreement is unlikely to be reopened, the EU have made it clear that they're happy to expand on the political declaration that accompanies the agreement, which would count as a change at the EU level. There's also the possibility of some sort of deal with the DUP, which could include a legally binding commitment to locking in Northern Ireland, so that it stays completely within the regulatory framework in the event of a backstop. Surely this would count as a substantial change to the agreement. Finally, there's one other way to get the deal through. The parliamentary convention that Burko was referring to in Erskine May only says that the same motion can't be brought back in one session. So technically, the government could dissolve or prorogue Parliament. Jacob Rees-Mogg actually pointed this out in Parliament. This would mean an emergency Queen's speech from May, and it would require the backing of the Privy Council, which isn't guaranteed. Parliament could then resume business the next day, and the government would be allowed to bring May's deal back again. However, while this is legally possible, it hasn't been done since 1948, 
to force something through called the Parliament Act, which limited the power of lords to block bills. If May was to do this again, it would be constitutionally massive. But then again, this is Brexit, so anything could happen. As always, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with our videos. Also follow us across our social networks so that you see all of our exclusive content and our articles when they're posted on the website. You can find us by searching for TLDR News.